looks like you have been so industrious in isolation. Looks like you've set up Suncorp Stadium in your backyard. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I did a bit of a home job. Me and my brother Zach, we um, put the footy post back up the other day. We um, we used to put them up every winter here when we were younger as kids and play backyard footy every every afternoon, get the neighbourhood around. Um, and we we didn't we were always taken down for the uh, summer playing cricket in the backyard. So. Uh, one summer, uh, one winter come around, we never put the post back up. So uh, I asked Dad the other day if we still had them around the back of the shed and, uh, yeah, they were still there. And so we changed <laughs> a couple star picket posts in and put the PVC pipes over the top of them and, um, yeah, we got cool. the post. Well, take us for a bit of a tour. I mean, for those yeah. at home... It, oh, how yeah, good. Yeah, it's spectacular. <laughs> it honestly looks better than Brookie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we got, got the corner post in as well and Dad... He, po he painted the uh, the black dot on the crossbar as well when we were younger. So uh, there are uh, the crossbar is actually regulation size. The posts are a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, who you got the playing with you? Who, who's, who's out the yard there? Uh, I got Josh there. Um, our other brother Zach, they're twins, Josh and Zach, and then I got my dad as well. Oh, dad's there too. How, how does he go? Is there restrictions on how hard you can hit, dad? <laughs> Nah, nah. No, no. <laughs> 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 How does he go? I think I'm 33. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he goes good. He um, <clears throat> we changed the teams up a bit today. It's been Josh and me versus Dad and Zach recently, and today it was Dad and I versus the two younger brothers, and uh, we actually got the, the younger guys today. So <laughs> keeping up with us still. So he's doing really well. Mate, have you had much conversation, um, you know, with the Broncos in terms of, you know, how they're keeping you guys connected? And, and I mean, f for the club and the publicity with what we're seeing, a lot has been about the relocation of the Queensland sides. Your coach, Anthony Seabolt, said he was happy to, to move you guys down and find, um, find a, you know, a, a bunker down here in Sydney to, to get the competition started. And then we get Darius Boyd that says, you know, no way in hell does he want to, you know, leave his family for a long period of time. So... Yeah, have the club been in contact with you? Where do you sit with all of this? Yeah, we've been um, spoken to as a playing group and uh, we've been informed as everyone else about the, the May 28 start date. So uh, that's what we're, we're really excited about. We're really looking forward to having footy back and uh, I think we'll be looking to be training again in the start of May. So uh, up till then, we've just been given a few little programs here and there to um, just keep that fitness up to some uh, standards that we come back. We're not just all dragging on the dragging on the ground. Yeah. Brady, you're just starting to fit in there up at the Brisbane Broncos. Started the first couple of games, the combinations. Now you've got to start all over again. Uh, I wouldn't say we have to start all over again. We had a really good pre-season, as I guess every other team did. You don't burst anyone in pre-season. But, uh, yeah, we formed a lot of the, the, the combinations in that pre-season, I guess. And, um, yeah, the mateships grew as well. And... We've been keeping in contact with each other, getting the Zoom uh, meetings together. Uh, uh, and that's that's been keeping us in touch with each other. So, um, mm. yeah, it'll be all systems go when we come back. And, uh, yeah, hopefully, I don't think we would have lost too much in this time. Um, and yeah, we're just all looking forward to getting back playing footy together. Mate, get us a little bit of an insight on the, the different ways that Brisbane and also the Melbourne Storm uh, prepare for games or prepare the way that they're going to play. Uh they're not too dissimilar, I guess. Uh, the Melbourne, like everyone knows the Melbourne Storm, how structured and clinical they are with everything they do. Um, and I, Anthony Seabold, he does come from um, the Storm background as well. So he's got a bit of that in him. Uh, but then I also like a little, of, um, like he puts his own little touch on things as well. And um, yeah, I just really love the environment at the Broncos. Uh, so yeah, it's not, it's not too dissimilar. Um, but yeah, I'm certainly enjoying it. That's for sure. Brody, why, why Brisbane? I mean, we, we saw last year, you know, you had a really successful period there. Um, you know, for I think it was about up until round 21 where you missed the back end of the season, albeit that round 25 game, I think it was, when I unable to play the final series. But you still had time to go there at Melbourne. No, no doubt that you know, it was publicised that they had their salary cap issues. But why Brisbane? Uh, I think, obviously, the first reasoning would be definitely my family. They're... Um, like mum and dad, this place here where I've grown up is only an hour 40 from from Brisbane. So, like, I've had a few chances already when the season was still going in pre-season where I'd just drive here for a, a day trip, catch up with mum and dad and the brothers and family, and grandparents as well. Um, so, yeah, that was definitely probably the major major reasoning. Um, but then also the opportunity to play at the Brisbane Broncos are such a prestigious club, uh, such rich history and... 
uh, with the potential of where they're going. Um, yeah, it really excites me to be a part of part of their playing squad. Well, you're not just part of the playing squad, Brody. You you're the, you represent this new generation of this very mighty and proud Brisbane Broncos, named as a co-captain. I mean, it's a lot of leadership uh, responsibility that falls on your young shoulders. But I can imagine that you know, at some point, this is a, this is a wonderful opportunity for you, and it's probably come early and earlier than you'd you'd hoped in your career. But but a, but a wonderful endorsement of the way you go about your football. Yeah, I was hugely honoured. Uh, well, even when I first got named in just the leadership in the leadership group at the Broncos, um, yeah, to be uh, first of all come to the Broncos was massive. And then when uh, Thebes offered me to uh, have a place in the leadership group, uh, I was hugely humbling. And then, uh, unfortunately, the way things worked out with uh, Lex's uh, hamstring at the start of the year here, uh, yeah, it kind of fell into place for Patty and myself to to take on that that co-captaincy for the first couple games and I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's certainly a lot more, uh, I don't know if you'd call it expectation or pressure, but uh, I, cert- I I don't mind it. I, I like it. I, I um, As a halfback of the team, you're, you're going to have to direct the team around and you're going to have that criticism and you're going to have that expectation of pressure on you anyway. So uh, it didn't really change too much for me as a halfback. I'd, my job's to lead the team around and direct the boys around the field. So... Uh, yeah, I just pretty much had to do that. That's what I had to stick to. And, um, yeah, we had, we're fortunate to get a really good start to the season. Uh, and it's unfortunate how things have gone with the, the coronavirus uh, breaking up the season, how it is. But, yeah, hopefully we can, when we come back, we can keep the good times rolling. Must be good sitting behind that pack at the moment. Very young, no fear. Bangai Junior, Haas, those sort of guys for feeder. Just sitting back watching those guys do their business. Must be pretty oh, yeah. good for you. Yeah, they certainly make my job a lot easier. That's, <laughs> you're looking for as a halfback, you want your forward back going forward. And uh, when you see those guys charging up the middle of the field, getting those quick play the balls, uh, yeah, I just need to make sure I take my opportunities when I can and back myself there off the back of them um, and just create the opportunities that I can for them because, uh, yeah, as you said, they're very dangerous runners. And, uh, yeah, they can uh, surprise, they've surprised me at training and just how freaky they are both on the field and in the gym. Uh, yeah, they're freak athletes. Um, yeah, I'm just uh, doing everything that I can to um, just jump on the back of them, really. It's a famous number seven that you wear. What about Alfie Langer? What have you learnt off him <laughs> being around uh, Red Hill and uh, how much of a joy is he and a, a cheeky joy at that to have around? Yeah, I love I love hanging around Alfie. He's always there <laughs> at training, one of the first ones there. And um, I just love uh, buying into uh, everything he knows about the history of the Broncos. That's the biggest thing I've been asking him questions about. Like he, he played in the 90s there. He won four premierships. I think he was captain for all four of them. So uh, obviously they were doing something right back then. So, And that's what we want to try to get to some somewhat with uh, the team we've got now, which is huge potential with the team we have. Like it's still a long way to go, obviously, but um, just trying to learn about the, the rich history of the Broncos and what it means to be a Brisbane Bronco. I was very fortunate to have my... Uh, debut jersey presented by Alf and hear him listen to listening to him talk about uh the jersey uh and he got he got quite emotional actually when he was presenting it to me and uh, it was really touching so uh yeah I've had a lot of a lot of great chats with Alf and I uh, yeah, love hanging around with him